Uh, what's up? You here to debate? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. What's your name, age, and pronouns, please? Uh, Kylis, 18, he, him. All right. What, uh, so what I'm are you just here to debate? Through, uh, can I just go through multiple of them? Uh, well, pick one, and we'll start with Aaron when we can move to the rest after. All right. So, shit, hold on. Let me look at this. Uh, well, the biggest one, abolish police slash prisons. Um, yeah, what is the benefit of completely abolishing police? Like, what gets done there if you just get rid of police officers and law enforcement? Yeah, so the movement for abolishing police and prisons isn't saying that we have to remove social safety like agencies or institutions. It's saying that the current institutions of policing and prison operate under a carceral and retributive justice model that leads to like negative outcomes. And we want to replace that. We, we want to abolish that and replace it with a with an institution that focuses on transformative and restorative justice. So in this institution that you'd replace it with, is there still police officers who are out like is there still cops? I, I would say out? I would say there would still be like safety institutions, but I wouldn't call them police because the goal of police is the protection of private property. The goal of this uh, uh, institution would be to protect and uh, to to protect and maintain citizen like safety and health. Okay, but in this different system, there would still be police driving around effectively the same, like police cars could pull people over, could enforce the law, like all of that would still be present. It would not look the same, and but if you want to call them police, you can, but I wouldn't call them police because they're operating under a completely different goal with completely different uh, uh, methods and strategies. Would they still be able to carry firearms and, you know, like arrest people, all of that? Would that all still be the same? I'm agnostic on the firearms. Possibly, possibly not. It just depends on, like, how I'm really looking. Uh, would they be able to arrest people? I would say that the people that are doing the patrolling should not have the arresting power. The arrest should be done by lawyers because, unfortunately, cops consistently abuse people's civil rights when they arrest them. And I would rather constitutional lawyers be the ones to arrest people. So... I, I see what you're saying there, and police do regularly abuse their powers. But I also think that that's an important part of protecting people and protecting society is that if someone's being dangerous, we can get them off of the streets and get take care of them. And like, like that you can call the police to take care of things like that. I think that's also important. And that gets rid of that entirely. Yeah, I don't feel like we need to call police, though, to do that. Right. Police are just sure, what say, we have what, now. What, I guess, but, but there's a reason we have the amount of them we have. Like, I do fully agree that there's issues within the police system, but why not just go for better training well, and more that. background checks, all of that? But we haven't really done that. Yeah, we to the we've been increasing. We've been increasing training since the 70s. It doesn't accomplish anything because the goal of police is not to help people. The goal is to protect private property and interests. So, like, how can we? How can training make it better when the goal for for them is not to go out and service the community? I'd argue that's not entirely true, and that's that the goal maybe it may be a mix of both of those, but I don't think the goal is only if this to was the case private property. Sure, if this was the case, why did the Supreme Court case Castle Rock v. Gonzalez um, basically say that police have no legal requirement to protect people? That I don't know. I am not aware if it said that or not. I don't know what you're talking about with this. Regards Castle Rock v. Gonzalez was a, a Supreme Court case where a woman was claiming that a man was stalking her and a man was violent around her. Even after the cops being called to the man multiple times, they really had nothing they could do. When the, when the man killed the woman, the woman's uh, family sued the cops, saying they should have protected her from this man. The Supreme Court said, no, cops are under no legal obligation to protect, protect you. They said they don't have to protect you. If, they, if you die because the cops didn't protect you, that's fine. They, they don't have to. I mean, depending situationally, that's true. They don't. Uh, did this man commit any crimes or do anything where they could legally arrest him? He broke multiple restraining orders. Okay, then yes, that is, that is wrong. I agree with you there. But I'm also saying, like, say I'm being assaulted by someone or someone is threatening me and the police come and they take care of it, which has happened to me. Like, I've had to call the police on people before. How are they protecting private property, not the people in that situation? Sure. How is I, would, I would argue that the couple of instances where police do this are heavily outweighed by the instances where they don't, right? I'm going to look at it as a metric. I'm going to say, are they committing more 
harm? Or are they committing more? Like, are, do they have a higher positive benefit or a higher negative benefit? I would say they definitely have a higher negative benefit. But again, we can create systems that don't operate in the same way that can do the things that you still want to happen in society, but they don't have to be a carceral and retributive police force. I somewhere I don't understand the bulk you're of on. the bulk of crime is just due to poverty. So like if we address poverty, we're going to address like the giant bulk of the reason why people are in prison anyway. Totally. Um, I totally agree that the, like the root of these problems is not like that's not the root, but and like there is things that need to be addressed to help these problems and that policing is some level of a band aid, but that band aid is also necessary to get to that point. And maybe we could do more to step towards that point, but I still think it's necessary in the meantime till we could get to that point. So and really I think quickly, this, just, yes, just to address something. <clears throat> Sorry, choked on my water. Uh, <clears throat> abolition is not a top down model; it's a bottom up model. So we wouldn't we wouldn't do abolition until we've addressed these societal issues. Okay. Abolition doesn't happen from the top down. I understand that. I still think there is a necess necessity, no matter what, maybe less of it and maybe going about it in different ways, but there's still a ne necessity for armed law enforcement who can have their own jurisdiction of what they can do. Well, yeah, and I think that I necessity only exists, only exists because, because we've allowed crime to boil up to what it is via messing with the material conditions. Uh, we're not messing with, but allowing the material conditions of society to get as bad as they are. I partially agree, but I also think there's, it may be less if that was the case, but there's always going to be some people who like are just crazy and are just going to be bad and cause harm regardless. That's, that's, that's such not, the vast minority of people, dude. I don't think it's as minor as it, it's still the vast the amount of people that police act on as is or arrest as is, is a vast minority. Like it's still a minority and a lot of them sure could be helped with those things and that wouldn't come to it. But I still think there's a decent amount that it would still come to the point where police are necessary. Regardless I disagree. of whether, whether well, I, I'd say if we're looking at like somebody having like psychopathy and so they have like this, this uncontrollable urge to commit crime, we're only looking at 1% of the of like the global population. And that means even less a percentage of Amer of the American population and even less of a percentage of the people that are actually like in our prison system. The bulk of people in our prison system are in there for crimes of poverty and all of those are not compulsory crimes. They're crimes that are bred from from poor conditions. I understand that and that's I, that's wrong. But there's still just like people, it doesn't necessarily require psychopathy or like being psychotic to commit crimes. Like people just get angry, people do. Humans aren't entirely rational beings. We do things that are bad without being insane that doesn't make you insane and i don't think that's all on society i think it's always been that way to some extent no and what i would say is what i would say is I, no i agree with you i agree with you i would say that we're though we're not looking at though we're looking at people who only did the things they did because of the typically because of the material conditions right if they don't have psychopathy right if they're not psychotic right um if they don't have a compulsion to do these crimes then the crimes were born from something and, and typically what we see, even in violent crime, is this, the number one stressor in violent crimes is is wealth inequality. Poverty. Sure. But what if I just have someone who's angry at me? They're, like, drunk and angry and trying to fight me, and I can't call the police on them. Or, like, drunk and angry and threatening me. Why shouldn't I be able to call the police? I mean, I would say even if you did call the police, they're not going to get there in time for you to not get, like, knocked out or something. You know what I mean? The police are showing up probably after the fact. Right? That they're person just, will probably get an assault charge. Yeah, but what does what does them getting an assault charge do? I would prefer I would they prefer get. they get I would prefer they get like anger management classes and things like that. And if that's the case, if that's the case, if we if we if we and this is this is another thing I think we should do. If we take children when they're in school from grades K through eight through twelve and we give them comprehensive therapy and counseling every like two times a week, we're gonna be able to find out if people have anger management issues and then provide them anger counseling well ahead of the point where they're gonna get drunk and knock somebody out. That may be true. And there definitely could be more preventative measures taken instead. Uh, and there could definitely be less police. I fully agree with that. I mean, I live in a small town and we have like maybe 50 squad cars for 20,000 people at the police station. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But I also don't think that just like regular, just putting everyone in constant therapy is necessary. Sure, some people need it, but I think it can also 
on that front take rid like kind of take away some of your individuality as a person if everyone is in the same systems going through these same like therapists and all of this. Wait, I disagree that's, that's really I, I don't think there's any evidence to back up that this would remove individualism maybe there is an evidence I'm not sure I just find that if everyone's being put through more of the same exact systems but they're not then... and therapy is highly individualized they wouldn't be going through the same thing they would be it would be severely individualized you know what I mean that may be true. I I also am personally biased on that because I just disagree with therapy in general. But that's a whole different thing. Uh, I see what you're saying with the police. Can I just move on to another, another yeah, sure. one of the points? So, why do you think this is kind of two in one? The minors deserve gender affirming care and teach comprehensive sex and sexuality education K, K through twelve. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, minors deserve gender affirming care because there are minors who are trans and there are especially minors who are severely gender dysphoric. And if they don't be if they're not able to receive some level of gender affirming care, whether that be social, whether that be, be behavioral, whether that be therapeutic, whether that be uh, medical, um, they we risk negative outcomes from them. We risk uh, the possibility of uh, suicide and we risk the possibility of self-harm um, on the flip. Why we should teach comprehensive sex and sexual sexuality education. K through 12 is because with age appropriate sex and sexuality uh, education, um, things like child childhood, like child assault, they, they lower. Kids are more able to accurately describe what happens to them if they are assaulted. And then they're not as uh, targeted when they actually know, like they, they know the proper names for their body parts. They know their anatomy. They're, they have a better understanding of consent, which is something that would be taught there. So it's just age appropriate, uh, age appropriate education that I think all ch children should have. Possibly, and I don't necessarily disagree, but I think you don't want that gender affirming care or like you know sexuality education pushed too far because I'm like I'm not homophobic. I don't give a fuck what people are. It doesn't concern me. Um, but I just don't understand why we need to push that on people. I don't think it should be so like such a big thing. Like if someone wants to be gay, if someone's trans, that's all their thing i might not agree with them but it's not my place to do anything and it doesn't need to bother me what what but are you what do you when you say this it's being pushed how do you feel that it's being pushed i mean it's everywhere like it's undeniably lgbtq all of that is everywhere it's in the media it's in celebrities like it's just being pushed everywhere and that is undeniable there's like i don't think we should discriminate against those people and i think they should have equal rights but i also don't think some child should be having like hormonal. Uh, I don't. I don't think you've. I don't think you've effectively showed how it's pushing. Um, do you believe that children can be influenced to be a different gender than what their gender identity tells them they are? I totally believe that is possible. Yes. Okay. What methods could someone have done to convince you to be a girl? Um. If I was told. My whole life, you know, I grew up uh, in the South in like a very conservative family younger and then have lived around people who are pretty traditional, not like somewhat traditional. And I think if I was told my entire childhood, oh, it's OK, you can be whatever you want. If you want to be a girl, you can be a girl that may have gotten to me in some way because you were born like without really knowing anything and you do learn things and you learn how to be a man or a woman. And if you aren't taught that, I don't think it's as likely to happen. And I think it leads to a lot of confusion in some cases. Okay, so so just so that I'm fully con con uh, understanding of here, you believe that if your family had stated from an early age that you were a girl, that you would believe that you were a girl? If they had stated that I could be a girl or regularly talked about how it would be okay to be a girl or to be any of these things, I don't know if I would be, but I think it would be more likely and I think I would be more confused about it. Okay, so I'm going to disagree just based on like human development and how we know gender works in the human brain. I'm going to disagree with this. Uh, gender identity tends to be a pretty immutable characteristic of our brains. Neurologically, when we have one, like our gender identity tends to be one thing and like it doesn't tend to shift, right? You might have a, there might be some issues in like understanding what it is, right? So there might be some, a learning curve in this regard, but our gender identities tend to remain fairly consistent um, uh, starting around the ages of like three to four. Um, there doesn't really seem to be any relevant evidence that shows that this can be an influenced um, ideal, especially when we look at people like David Reamer, 
whose parents did tell him throughout his whole life that he was a girl and he was always like no no i'm not uh so i i it just doesn't the evidence doesn't track to show that this happens um maybe i i'm not saying it actually does change your gender identity i understand that that's the thing that does not change that's why i said confusion because regardless of whether your gender identity may be a solid thing in your brain that is just there and that's why i don't like look down on people for being transgender but i think the human brain can also be confused and manipulated even if it doesn't seem like it so that can slowly you can just be confused about it and think you're something that you're not even if really down you are what you are you know this is why i'd say we should have comprehensive sex and sexuality education if we comprehensively talk to the children about this that confusion goes away oftentimes the confusion of what you are is there because you don't have the language or understanding of what this stuff is you know what i mean like if you don't know what what gender is how gender works you'll always be confused about it as opposed to us walking kids through what gender is how gender works how gender exists in our brain things like that that will give them that understanding and, and level level levy up some of that confusion right <clears throat> I, I you might have a kid, for instance, for instance, hold on, let me say, you might have a kid who's gender fluid, right? You might have a kid who only, only uh, expresses themselves socially, but because all they see when it comes to gender might be stuff on TikTok, now they want to go and, and they're like, well, well, I'm just a girl. Uh, I don't like, right? They don't have the understanding that like fluidity exists or that uh, non-binary people exist. Or that like they don't have this sort of understanding. So like this is this is part of an issue that arises when we don't allow our kids to have comprehensive education. And instead we go, well, figure it out on your own. I think that's a that's a worse, uh worse method of doing things. Maybe the education is comprehensive. I don't think most children have the capacity to really understand it, no matter how comprehensive it is. I I children well, that's don't why really it's age appropriate. It. That's why it's age appropriate. It's a complex children, topic. I don't think wait, children will wait. understand. Children don't understand algebra, but we teach them one plus one equals two, right? We teach them the building blocks at a young age so they get the so that they can have the wider scope. So maybe we don't teach kids exactly what it means, uh, exactly what gender identity means in kindergarten, but we teach them, hey, some people used to be man- men, now they're women. Some people have two moms and two dads. Some people like to be called boy. Some people don't like to be called boy, right? We teach them very age-appropriate, toned-down concepts, and then that is used as the building blocks for further education as they grow. I still think that could be very confusing. I think I, that could I be... disagree. I've worked around kids my whole life. I, I disagree. I think kids are, kids are so much smarter than people give them credit for. I also agree, and I do think children are smarter than people think, but they're also easily influenced. Like I, especially the people they look up to, I have a little cousin who I've lived with a lot of my life. And if I said something to him, like, you know, oh, you know, some people don't want to be called a boy. You could be called a girl. You could be called whatever you want. He would probably take that as in, oh, I should do this. Cause that he made, like he proposed the idea or the thought of it. And I think they're way more influenced by it than you'd think. I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to disagree. And I, I haven't seen any evidence to show the okay. contrary. I, I don't have evidence. This is just through firsthand life experiences and like interacting with people. And I think you can only really get so much documentation of how this stuff really works because we don't really understand. We don't really have a good comprehension of how the brain works in these ways. And there's, again, I'm going I'm to disagree with that again. I think we do. I don't think that's true. I just think that boys and girls should be raised as boys and girls unless they strongly feel otherwise. You know, like I will, will if I have a son, I will raise him as a man. If I have a daughter, I will raise her as a woman. If, but if either if of them come to me, if, you know, wait, 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 but this is what we're, let me can't finish speaking, please. Sure. If either of them comes to me and is like, this isn't how I feel. I strongly feel like I'm a boy. Then I will respect that. I will talk to them about it and see where they're coming from and try my best to respect that. But I think until someone feels strongly, they should be raised as what they were born as. How would they know how to verbalize that feeling if they're not getting the education on it? Um, They will, like, I mean, first of all, we are exposed to it in society anyways. They'll learn one way or another. Some kids are. Some aren't because their parents don't let them be. Beyond that, they will find some, they will, like, 
have some feeling about it. If that's it, like if like you're saying, if it's such a strong thing in your brain, they will have some feeling about it. Wait, you know? so and I I have I have a lot of people in my community are, who are trans, right? When they talk about the feeling they experienced as children, it's never I knew I wasn't a boy, right? They never verbalize the feelings in this way. As children, those feelings are verbalized in very abstract ways because that's all the language they have. So if we're not educating them and all they can do is, so for instance, I had a friend who described their gender dysphoria as like a feeling of spiders underneath their skin at all times, right? That's how it feels to them. They don't have the, they didn't have the words as a kid to go, oh, I didn't feel comfortable in, I, in either, because this was a non-binary friend. They said, I didn't feel comfortable in either uh, boy or girl roles. They didn't have the language for that because they were never exposed or educated on that. So we should just let kids suffer through years of feeling this way until they eventually on their own find the information? To some extent, yes. To some extent, I'm gonna disagree yes, with this. I, I think this is what leads to, to severe gender dysphoria. It leads to self harm and leads to suicidality. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna disagree with you on this, uh, on this instance. I understand what you're saying, but I also think that like, if we teach them the words to feel those things, they could. You're saying they can mistake feelings of gender dysmor dysmorphia for other things, or just like they can mistake them for other feelings, is what you're saying. No, I'm saying the they don't have the language to verbalize. They just don't have because that they language because they don't fully understand what they're feeling. Well, they no, don't fully understand. They would fully it. understand it if, if someone gave them the language. I don't think that makes any sense. Uh, well, I, I, think, I, I, I think, here's where here's where we're gonna be at a standstill here because your don't think I can provide evidence of children who are taught this who then have the language and are able to verbalize. So your I don't think is matched up against my physical evidence. I don't know if that's true. Um, are you saying that most like most children have the words to say, I feel like a girl if they want to. They have that language. I don't know what you're saying, but they don't. They can say that if they want to. Because so you're, what you're, saying, you're well, thinking that they all have that innate, that that's what their innate insides are telling them. But oftentimes that's not what it's telling them. And it, without the guidance of explaining how those feelings relate, right? It's the same way with like some kids might get like super angry. But hold on. Some kids might get very angry. But until someone explains anger to them, they don't really have words to verbalize these feelings. They just know that something saying. feels bad. That's what, I, that's what I was saying. It's a lack of comprehension of what the feeling is. And that's you disagreed with me on that. That's literally what I was saying is that you don't understand what you're feeling. This would be why we should comprehensively teach them so they can right. comprehensively right. verbalize their feelings. If these children, because their children aren't able of comprehending that on their own, and we teach them how to comprehend it, could that not lead to false comprehension of it? Uh, I, don't it I, don't, I don't think it would. I don't think it would, no. If you can provide evidence that it might, maybe, but I, I, unless I see evidence that it will, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say a bunch of kids should suffer because of something that we don't have evidence for. I don't really think there's any way to provide evidence for that, and I don't think. I think that's just there's no. We'd have to do so many trials and all this research, which would probably be morally questionable as well, to, to provide evidence on this. Well, no, you would just teach a bunch of kids comprehensive education and then see if. So, see do you what think happens. we should give kids? hormones and gender surgeries uh, i think that if it, i think that we should give kids developmentally appropriate medical affirming care so it would be at the developmental level they are typically that would be tanner stage one for pubertal suppressants or i'm sorry tanner, tanner stage two for pubertal suppressants tanner stage three for hormones and then um hold on then it would be, I think it's five is when we would, we, Tanner stage five is when we would do like uh, bottom surgery. So you think we should give these children hormones and surgeries to change their gender before they are fully developed because they are. What children. did I just, okay, that's going to piss me off. I quite literally just said developmentally appropriate. Yes, developmentally appropriate hormones. Which means that they are, they are at a developmental stage where these specific treatments are appropriate for them. But it is slowly developmentally on track, biologically changing their gender. 
that was word salad. I don't know what you just said. Uh, they are slowly on track, know. biologically, developmentally changing their their hormone their hormone structure. What are you saying? They are like it's on track developmentally, like you were saying, but they are changing their gender slowly as a child, as a minor. P- gender affirming medical care doesn't change their gender; it just matches their phenotypic sexual traits so that they align Change. with the gender identity. Changes their biological gender. There's their, no such like, thing as biological gender. Their sex. I think what I, I may not have the right, correct terms for it in your mind, the but I think term I, would be phenotypic sex. Changes their phenotypic sex, as in changes their hormones, changes their body parts, all of that. You think that should be done to children? I think children should have developmentally appropriate medical care. Yes. 100%. What is that about? Okay. It means what I just said. At Tanner stage two is when we would be looking at like pubertal suppressants. At Tanner stages three to four, we would be looking at hormone replacement therapy. Uh, at Tanner stage five, typically we would be looking at then them being able to get bottom surgery. Tanner what stage ages five, are these? Tanner stage five are. is like 18. Okay, but the hormones are happening. At Tanner as... stage two, which is like, well, hormones would be at Tanner stage three which is anywhere from like 11 to 15. So I guess the other question I have is like, there is people who have had these gender surgeries and had the hormones like and changed all of that and then have been stuck in a body that they realize they're not later on. And I, this would be I can't point, name point three percent of people. Do you have evidence that says that? Yes. I have multiple studies that do. The highest you're going to find is 3%. The lowest you're going to find is 0.3%. Okay. Um, I don't know. I just think I've seen specifically, specifically we, there was a, uh, a study that looked at 552, uh, youth clinic referrals over a period of six years, uh, of these youths, not, uh, of the youths who received puberty blockers, only two of them, uh, two of them went off of them. That's one. And that would be 1% of the cohort. Only 2% or 1%. I'm sorry. Only 1% went off the puberty. The rest stayed on pubertal, puberty blockers. And the ones who went off just went off with no, with no issues. They just went off puberty blockers and went back to. Uh, regardless of that, I still think that these gender affirming surgeries or medication or whatever it is that they're doing for them should not be given to minors. Why? I just don't think it's right. It doesn't feel right. I think it's not. I mean, minors aren't allowed to make a lot of decisions for themselves. I am 18. I've been like, it's not that long since I was a kid. Um, like you can't do things that make big changes in your life as an, as a child. You're not allowed to. I don't see why you should be allowed to do that. I either. don't think this is making a big change in their life. I think this is, I think, I think people, you say this all the time. Life. I think people say this all the time that it's making some big, massive change. I'm actually going to disagree with this assertion entirely. I don't think it's making this big change in their life. I think all it is doing is making them more comfortable with who they are. I don't think there's this big, big, massive change. I, 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 yeah, I, I would disagree with this assertion. Having the body of a man or the body of a woman is a massive change in your life in so many ways. Not if you're coming off and, of puberty. Uh, not if you're coming off of, of be a, pre-pu- a prepubescent body. No, it's not. You're already going to make that change. You're already going to go through a pre pre pubescent bodies are essentially the same, save for uh, reproductive uh, systems sure. and like private parts, right? The hormone production is around the same. the The bone bone structure, face face structure, all of this is essentially the same. So they're not going through this major change. The major change would be if they go fully through male puberty and then have to fully go through female puberty after that. That would be the major change. Not just going through uh, female puberty to begin with, or male puberty to begin with. I I don't really have anything to say about that. I guess I do see what you're saying, but also, I just don't think kids have the developmental level to make these decisions for themselves, and to make these decisions to permanently change their body. They're not, they're not, A, they're not making those decisions for themselves. Those decisions are made with a team of people, parents, doctors, endocrinologists, counselors, therapists. There's a team of people making those decisions. And of the children, of the children that even get uh, diagnosed gender dysphoric, the amount who gets put on cross-sex hormones, pubertal suppressants, the ones that might receive top or bottom surgery, is the minority of those kids. So the minority of them are even meeting the criteria to get this stuff. 
It's a very strict criteria you have to meet and able to be. And when you get that, when you do this, parents are making a benefit risk analysis where it's, do I provide this to my child or do I allow my child to be a suicide risk? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to choose gender affirming care every time over a dead kid. hundred percent of the time. So would I, I, um, I do think there's other ways to prevent suicide besides gender affirming care. I don't think that's the only way. Um, all major but, psychological and medical bodies would disagree with that assertion. Everything else has been tried. The only thing that tends to work is, is gender affirming care. That's the only thing. Everything else has been tried. Well, maybe as it is now, I, I, I don't necessarily, you could be right. There's maybe some cases where it's good, but I do think it should be difficult and it should be a thing that really has to be considered and it shouldn't just be given out. And I also don't think that's the only way of preventing suicide in children who have gender dysmorphia is gender affirming care. So one, I, I, we just went over, it's not just given out. It's very strict criteria. And two, yes, you'd have to name good. me, you'd have to name me what these other methods are because we've tried everything. It doesn't work. I'm not necessarily even talking about these, you know, like research the trials that have been done. I'm just talking about in general, if someone is living a happy and fulfilling life, I don't think gender dysmorphia is going to make them kill themselves. Gender dysphor dysphoria makes it so they can't live a happy and fulfilling life. Having gender dysphoria quite literally makes it so that they are incapable of living a happy and fulfilling life, especially if that gender dysphoria is severe enough. Gender dysphoria attacks your brain. I don't know that tax is a good word, but gender dysphoria quite literally affects your brain. It causes massive stress right? It causes, uh, it, it allows for more mental health comorbidities. Like I, it feels like you're not really aware of what you're talking about. I'm, I mean, to be completely honest, like data wise and evidence wise, I'm not, but personal experience and seeing people and human interactions, I am, which I'd argue is just as important on this front. Um, and no, I have not personally experienced gender dysmorphia. dysmorphia. Well, I'm not even experience it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree. I, I don't think personal experience in like knowing people is enough for for this, uh, for for the opposition claim here. I'm just gonna uh, reject that assertion. Maybe not. Uh, I just don't think that it should be pushed on people, and I don't think that it should be given to children. That's all I have to say about it. And. I think that's morally wrong. I think it's a big change and also like to a child to let a child make to themselves. And I think pushing it on people is a pushing it on children is horrible and morally wrong. And I think I would argue it 100 percent is based on what I so media kid. Would you agree that media has a big influence on people? Sure. In general. Okay. The media is full of people, children's influencers as well, who are pushing LGBTQ stuff and making how it very it being, a big how part is, of their platform. How is it being pushed? Are you saying just them being gay or being LGBT or being trans is them pushing? I have never seen a social media influencer ever who said, we want your kids to be trans. They typically are just trans. Is just being trans enough to be considered pushing? No, I don't think, okay. but constantly putting that in someone's face is, and that's the issue so with media would you, in general. would you say that we've Things been constantly... You don't have to directly state that you... Wait, would you, would you, you say that we've been directly. constantly pushing uh, trans kids to be cisgender then? Uh, un unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, yes. Why is that pushing in some a negative? But I'd say that's, I'm not saying it isn't. Uh, I'd say it's been pushed in more. There's some people who are blatantly homophobic, and that's how it's pushed. And some people are will directly say it's wrong. Um, I if a kid thinks they're trans, I wouldn't try to change their mind. I'd talk to them about it, but I wouldn't try to change their mind. What I was saying is the constant presence of LGBTQ, just all of that in the media, in the way it's portrayed in the media is very pushing, especially on influenceable minds like young people. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to disagree, I guess. I don't think you can quantify this in any relevant way. Uh, well, I think I probably could. Not if, you believe the, uh, not if you believe it's also pushing on the other side.
I don't think I think you've you've instantly conceded the battle at that point. If you say the other side is also pushing, but that's that side you're okay with, right? You're not trying to you're not saying that that straight people are constantly pushing straightness on kids. You're not complaining you don't see that straight people going around talking about how straight they are. Yes, you do all the time. Straight people well, all the time. That's, all the time. Anytime, I anytime I see, funny. anytime I see a video online where a guy's picking up a girl, that's them talking about being straight. What? All that's the time, just, constantly. What are you talking about? That's just showing part of their life. That's not like that's what trans people do. They are just showing a part of their life, and a big part of their life is the fact that they're trans. That's all yes, they're doing. The fact, the fact that I'm straight is not a big part of my life. I do not make it a big part of my life. Some people I don't do. Agree. Some people do. Dating coaches, like so, like like Andrew Tate, a big part of his whole thing online, and he was the biggest person online for a while. Was him being a straight man? That was like the one of the biggest things about him. So this idea that straight would, people don't push the same stuff is nonsense. I would disagree that it's not. That's not the biggest part of his presence. I don't like him, but I don't think that was the biggest part of his personality. Or okay, I guess we got to agree to disagree on that. Sure. I just think often and not all the time a lot of like homosexual or trans or any of these gender fluid whatever are very adamant about making it known to everyone and talking about it and like which is cool i get that but i don't think children should be subjected to that i think in a world because in a world where a large part of the country is trying to outlaw you from even existing then yeah i think it's a good thing that you're trying to to show a platform where you're you're free as yourself and you're allowed to be you I don't think that platform is actually helping change those laws, and I don't agree with those laws. I don't. Th I don't think it should be limited. I don't think. I think they should have rights that they deserve and need. But I don't think it needs to be as broadcasted as it is. I just don't like. I just don't think that's right. Uh, I disagree, but I did get a message for chat that I have to read. Uh, Sersha, Sersha said, uh, "Caller is an effing weirdo." Love Sersha. Uh, remember, guys, if you do send if you do send a uh, a cash up or Venmo, I do have to read whatever you send on, uh, out loud. Uh, that was from Sersha. Uh, but I am gonna move on because we've been talking now for thirty seven minutes, and I think okay, you think we're good. Okay, I disagree, but okay, I I don't think you're right, but I don't think yeah, that's but you have been able to you have, again, but you have been able to substantiate your side other than I think and I feel. So I, I think like um, okay. You can think okay. and you can feel. That's fine, but you haven't been able to shit to assert your side via any relevant data or. All I'm saying is, men and women should like be that. raised as men and women until they strongly feel otherwise, and it should not be like. That's, that's and that what we should do. be enforced. That's already. And what that we should do. be enforced, enforced until otherwise. Is crazy. Not. I'm not saying like. Ugh, all right. All right. I disagree, but. Okay. Guess that's all I have to say. How do I leave this shit? Enforced is crazy, bro. I want to. Uh, I want to jail any parent that might let their kids uh, play with uh, gender-neutral toys. <laughs>